I am a hip hop educator and I have no slides. So I have no slides, which means that no intense preparation went into the creation of this presentation. Um, I have no slides because I don't have all the tools I'm supposed to have. So that means that I'm not well prepared. I have no slides. William Shakespeare says that all the world's a stage and that all men and women are players in it. And since all the world is a stage and I am on stage, and technically you're also on stage, but I don't see any big glowing screens behind you indicating when you should speak or watch, so I have no slides. One of the other or another prolific writer, one of the most brilliant writers of our time, Nas says, all I need is one mic. Therefore, I don't need slides. Hip hop education. Hip-hop education, hip-hop-based education, is education focused on the culture of a marginalized population who has been told for a very long time that they don't have the tools that are necessary to be successful in classrooms. And they've become successful in those classrooms despite that, in spite of that. That you don't have to come into the classroom what people say you should have, because you don't need them. All you need is you. So I am a hip-hop educator, and I have no slides. <laughs> now, when people talk about hip hop and hip hop education, there are a couple of expectations that you guys have. One of which is that I'm going to talk about rap music. True or false? Were you expecting that or not? Yeah. And the second is that I'm going to talk about poor, marginalized, oppressed youth of color. And since those are the two things that you want to hear about, I'll tell you a few stories. <laughs> so. I'm sitting in the back of a classroom in the Bronx with a video camera because I'm a science education researcher and I'm in the back of the classroom and I'm videotaping this teacher who is teaching chemistry. And he is sweating, he is jumping, he's doing pirouettes, he's doing everything imaginable to get the attention of the students in the classroom. And so I focus on him and I'm zooming on his face and I'm like, this is good stuff, right? <laughs> then something says, Chris, zoom out for a second and zoom in on the kids' faces. So I do just that. And when I looked at the faces across the room, everybody was asleep in different variations of what sleep should look like, <laughs> right? They're like head on hand, knocking all the way back, just sleep. And so I zoom back at him, and he's still intense. And back at them, they're still asleep. And then all of a sudden, I start hearing like a rumbling. And I'm like, oh man, is there an earthquake? What's going on here? And it was a rumbling, and it got louder and louder and louder and louder to the point where you can hear and feel this rumbling from right outside the classroom window. And it was the bass line of a rap song. And as the bass line sort of filtered through the room and into the classroom, the kids slowly woke up, right? And they, they looked at each other, and they smiled. Um, they, they would mouth the lyrics to the song, and others would finish it. They, they gave each other these sort of knowing glances. There was this sort of this, this, this emotion in the room based on the fact that this, 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 this thing was permeating that classroom space. And at the same time, I look at the teacher again, and he's still doing pirouettes in a dance of chemistry. He missed the entire moment that something had captured their interest in a way that all his dancing and sweating could not do. That is hip hop. That is its power. And then slowly, Obviously, the light eventually has to turn to green, right? The bass line moves further and further away, and slowly, as if it was never there, they return back to their narcoleptic state. <laughs> so that, for me, was a moment that said, we have to look at hip hop in education. About a year later, I got an email from a lady, and it's Dr. Emden, I read a chapter of your book. I, I should have known that's where it started wrong, because she, she didn't say I read your book. She just said I read a chapter of your book, right? So, so I should have known, right? So like, I read, a, I, read a I read a chapter of your book, and out here we're doing some amazing work in hip-hop education. You have to come here and see this. And, and I was like, OK, great, I'll come, right? And then she hit me on Twitter, and it, it was great. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll be there. Took a flight, went there, went to the school, walked in excited. There's a big hallway. I'm like, oh my God, a hallway of hip hop education. Get into the classroom, and I see students sitting at stations with headphones on, 
listening to some like rap science or rap English thing that she had bought. And to her, this was hip hop education. So the kids were sitting there memorizing some crap, <laughs> but it was crap to a beat and rhymes. And so I had to fly across the country to see this. And that is what some folks perceive as hip hop based education. Fast forward a few months later, I got another invitation. And this teacher said, man, you have to come to my classroom in the middle of America, states shall remain nameless, Idaho, um, and come to my classroom and see this hip hop based education. And after my last experience, I was like, nah, man, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Um, <laughs> But, but, but I, I was like, you know what, let me just give this one more try. And so I, I go into this classroom, and I walk into this classroom, I see all the elements of hip hop represented. When we think of hip hop education, we oftentimes think of just rap pedagogy. We don't think about emotion, like in the first case. We don't think about the fact that rap is but a thin slice of the complexities of the culture. Hip hop is robust, it is complex, it is culture. And if you think that hip hop pedagogy and rhyming or rap pedagogy is exactly the same thing, something is seriously wrong with you. I think we've gotten to a point in a space in the world of education where people are like, you know what? We have engaged in oppressive practices. And in order to sort of counter that, we have to focus on what kids are listening to. And this, this idea of focusing on what kids are listening to and naming that as hip hop or all of their culture is so wrong. The first class, and the second class that I visited might as well have been the same class. The effort to bring in a culture, if it's a superficial rendering of it, is problematic. So let's move beyond rap and into hip hop. Well, what is hip hop? Hip hop, like I said, is a culture. And it's a culture that has its own tenets and characteristics. African Bambata, who's as brilliant a scholar as John Dewey or Piaget, if you ask me, came up with the elements of hip hop. And he said, the elements are rap, b-boying, graffiti, DJing, and later on, a knowledge of self. That means that hip hop education cannot just be rap. It has to be all of those components. So the question is, how do we incorporate those components into teaching? Well, I'll tell you that by going back to the third classroom I visited and telling you what it is that I saw. So what did I see? The teacher was an MC. The teacher was rapping. The teacher was a physicist, lyricist, spit in this ridiculousness, so witness the ignorance I dismiss. But not only was the teacher rapping and performing a rap, the teacher was also creating a space where the students were creating it. Don't purchase rap and give it to me. Allow me to create it. The second thing I saw, which calls forth the idea of graffiti in hip hop, is that there was in that classroom a wall that was painted with black blackboard paint. And on that wall, students were allowed to go up there and just write, and just share, and just discuss, and write down their aliases. But that space was there because hip hop requires a space for the students to have a, a, a place where they can write down their thoughts and ideas and who they want to be. That is a requirement for hip hop pedagogy. Hip hop pedagogy has b-boying. What is b-boying? Breakdancing, movement, verve in a 40 minute classroom lesson. If there's no space for a student to get up, to stand up, to move, to celebrate when they get an answer right, it is not hip hop pedagogy because the elements of hip hop require that, that space is necessary. Hip hop also uses DJing. At the core of DJing, what is it? It is simply a manipulation of technology not the use of technology. You get the distinction? Meaning I don't just put a computer in front of you and say use it like I tell you to. I say here's the computer that's maybe five years old and play with it, deconstruct it, reconstruct it. Because DJing was taking a turntable and playing with it till it developed into a, its own art form. So in essence what I'm saying is let us start moving beyond rap pedagogy. Let us not think that if we're using a couple of rhymes and rhythms over beat that we're engaging in a hip hop pedagogy. What we're doing in that place is essentializing and fetishizing a culture of a whole population that wants to be interested in schooling and we're saying that we're gonna give you a superficial of your piece of yourself back and that represents who you are. And if that's what you're gonna do in the classroom is pander, 
If what you're going to do in the classroom is give you a small vision of who you are and let you play and shuck and jive, then we are engaging in oppressive practices as educators. <laughs> what is hip hop for the educator? H I P H O P. It is using your heart, H, looking for inspiration, I, using your power, P, to heal, H, oppressive, O, P, pedagogy. Are you hip hop? Thank you.